So working with our game states to build a fully functional game so it's not just something that runs when you hit play but it actually has an introductory screen so it starts out then we can play then we can win then we can lose as we work on building this up this creates a finished or complete project now with the framework as our starting place as we look at what is happening with that it's been stubbed out it has one variable currently in it and that is our game state string now inside of processing we're able to store the value of our game state we could store it as a number but that would not make as much sense when we look at it in our code game state equals one game state equals zero we would need a key to look at to keep track of that now it is possible we could create a construct a structure or enumeration that would allow us to then store it numerically and then have a visual name associated with it so the computer can process it faster we can read it a little bit easier but that adds in additional layers of complexity that we don't want to do so that's why our game state is stored as a string type variable so our game state is here the values that we associate with it we I am using all capitals in these strings for a couple reasons. One, so that they stand out. Two, so they kind of represent using constants. Now processing doesn't support the programming concept of constants in the same way that other languages do, so um, we're not going to worry too much about that. But if I read through my code and see the all capitals, it's easier to scan and find and see where I'm setting my game state within my code. Now one of the big advantages that happens when we use this kind of setup is that our draw loop becomes much less cluttered. Our draw loop now calls clear background and then it's going to call specific functions based on whatever the game state currently is. Currently the game state begins at start so we assign the value of start inside our setup and then once we do that draw is going to then call the start game function because game state is start now if I look further down in the code I will see that these functions have all been stubbed out they're ready to go they just need to be populated with content and in doing this it creates a much more manageable draw loop and it also starts us down the path of organizing our code into meaningful blocks. So instead of having draw be two, three, four hundred lines long where it's encapsulating all of the logic of our program, we've now organized it into these smaller functions and each one of these functions is then encapsulating what needs to happen during that particular state of our game. So during the start state, what we want to do is put some text on screen and then with that text on screen, we are going to then also be waiting for user input to begin the game. So we can do that by filling out the start game with some content. So to begin that, we can put some text on screen and the first thing I want to do is decide that my text is going to be centered because that's going to look a little bit better on screen. I will set a size for my title text and we can set that size measurement in pixels so I will choose 18. I'll choose a color for my title text and I'll just choose bright red so it's easy to see and then remembering that to put text on screen we use the text method and then we specify what text we want to have on screen so I can say click anywhere to play and then I specify a location for that text and I will put it so it's centered on the screen so the width of my screen divided by 2 and remembering that I centered the text 
so that the text is drawn from its middle point and then I'm drawing it at the middle of the screen and then my y value will just put centered as well. Now this begins the process of figuring out what happens on start. Now if I hit play, my program comes up and now I have text on screen. So it's a beginning. I'm going to need to continue this out and figure out what else we want to have happen on screen. The next thing I will want to put on some screen would be some information as to what are the rules of my game or how I want my player to play. Or there aren't any and I click anywhere to play and then the user has to figure it out. It kind of depends on what you've structured or how you want your gameplay to work. To add in our subtext, the instructions for the game, we will use a text size command and lower the size of the text so it has some difference to it. Choose a different fill color. Just choose bright blue. And with this Can insert a line break oh there we go so go right to lose go left to win oh, I need to specify where the text will be and it will be at the same location of width divided by 2 height divided by 2 now you will notice that I added something else in my text here and that's an escape character and the escape character inserts a line break. So the slash n inserts a line break. So that's the slash above the return or enter key not the slash down by the shift key. So it's and if you're a uh, look at things with operating systems. If you're building up the file structure on Windows, that's the demarcation where the Mac uses the other direction. If I run this again, you'll see now we're close, but the text does need to move itself down a little bit because I have text on top of text, which is kind of hard to read. So I will need to push that down. Remembering zero is at the top, numbers get bigger, and this is height all the way at the bottom. So if my text was 18, we need to go down at least 18. So it's going to be drop it down probably 20 to 30 as our height difference to space it out. So if I go height divided by 2 plus, we'll just throw in a number like 30. Let's see what we get and now that pushes the text down. So we're making progress but I'm clicking and nothing is happening yet and that's because we haven't programmed that into our project yet. We have not set up and said hey let's uh, find out if the mouse is pressed and then do something with that. Um. Is, let's change the game state. So it says click anywhere to play. So if I'm going to click anywhere to play to change my game state, that means I need to find out has the user clicked somewhere. So I'll just put in comment, look for the click. And what we can do, and this is where processing is nice, is it has a nice method, mouse pressed. So if mouse pressed is true, meaning they have clicked somewhere on screen, hit return twice, close out my curly, up arrow once, and now, so if they have pressed the mouse, 
we just simply say game state is now going to be set equal to single equal sign because we're assigning a value we're not asking a question or doing a comparison and the state I want to change to is play so if they press the mouse it changes the game state to play you can run that and see what it does so it's waiting here and I click and everything disappeared which is an indication that I went from if game state is start, game state is play, so now it's going to keep calling the play game function. If I look at the play game function, currently it does nothing, so we're assuming we're there at this point. We could just put some text on screen or put a block on screen, and I could just go racked, yeah. go hunt. 100, 100, 100, 100. So just draw a box. Just to verify something happened. And I click, yep, okay, we're in play game. So we now know it works. But now we don't need this line of text anymore. So that completes setting up start game.